Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to see how to use PowerShell to do some basic management tasks on your local and remote servers. Since it is PowerShell and not PowerPoint, let's get straight to the subject. So I have a couple of commands ready to go to show you some management tasks that we will do. And I'm logged on now on lab DC02. Since we are using PowerShell, we don't need a graphical interface. Why not use this one? Now, firstly, to open PowerShell outside of the CMD window, you can type start PowerShell. And now we have a PowerShell window ready to go. So first I want to show you a command with which you can get all the modules that you have on your server. And as you see, they are a couple. And in all these modules, you have different commands with which you can manage different things. Uh, for example, Active Directory, since we do have uh, it installed, or uh, DFSN or DNS client and DNS server and so on. Of course, we will not have time to go into each of these modules with uh, all of the commands that they have, but I want to show you some basic things that we did in the server manager video and that we can do also from PowerShell. And since we are talking about server manager, I want to show you the commands that are included in the server manager module. And the most important ones are install Windows feature and uninstall Windows feature, along, of course, with get Windows feature. There are also two alias commands, add and remove Windows feature, but I suggest you use the normal commandlets with install and uninstall. So let's see a list of all the features. And this command shows you all features that are installed or available to be installed. And uh, as you can see, for example, Active Directory Domain Services shows with an X and install state is installed. The others uh, above it, for example, are only available, so they could be installed. DNS server is also installed and so on. But it takes a while to go through everything and see what is installed and what isn't. So we use uh, some filters. Now we are going to get only the Windows features that have install state equal to installed. And it's uh, much cleaner now. You can see only what we have on this server. Now, if you want to install something, a feature or a role, doesn't matter. We use install windows feature and we give the actual name and when I say the name I don't mean this part, I mean this part. And when you install a feature or a role, a progress bar will appear that shows you where it is in the process and after it installs it will tell you if it was successful and if the server needs a restart or not. In our case, it doesn't need a restart since we just have the Telnet client. And to see if a specific feature or role is installed, we just uh, give the name in get Windows feature. And we see Telnet client installed. And because we <laughs> actually don't need it, why not also uninstall it? Okay, it's uninstalled. And this was the part uh, in which I wanted to show you Windows feature management on the local server. Let's get into some event logs also. Let's say I want to get all the event logs from system that are of type error. Not that many. But you can see in a 
very small time, we managed to filter out all the errors from the system event log. In case maybe you have a lot of uh, errors, but you only need the first ones, the newest ones, you can specify newest and the number. And it will give you the newest free system warnings. It's also possible to specify a text that should be included in the event log message. In my case, I want system events of type warning that contain time service. And one last thing regarding events, you can also get events based on the source. So let's say I want all events from system that have a source of Microsoft Windows kernel general. So you can see when the server restarted or shut down or started, etc. And here we are. Now let's move into service management. So like you saw also in server manager, we should be able to start, restart and get a list of uh, our services. Here is the command to get all services on this server. And by default, it will show you the name, the display name and also the status running or stopped. If you want a specific service, let's say bits, not bits by Dre, it will show us only this service and it stopped. I don't like it when it stopped and I want to start it. I just use start service, specify the name. And if I change my mind, I use stop service with the service name. So this was just a small snippet of what we can do with PowerShell on a server. We can do a lot more. There are many more commands, but I just wanted to show you some very, 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 very basics. Now let's see how we can actually configure something on another system. And we can use PowerShell remoting for that. And we can use two types of PowerShell remoting. The first one is with enter PS session and this is very similar in concept at least to SSH. So when I say enter PS session, I will be at the lab DC01 prompt basically. So now you see here, this part tells us that actually now when we run commands, we don't run them on labdc02, we run them on labdc01. And the host name should show us if it's really true or not. And now you can run whatever you want and it will run on that server. We can get the services that are uh, located on this server. And we can get, why not, also the features and roles. And to exit this uh, remote session, we just use exit PS session. Now we are back on labdc02. The second way of using PowerShell remoting, which is uh, much better for actual automation, is with invoke command. Invoke command lets us run a command or a PowerShell script on one or more servers, also with parallelism. So first let's try something simple. I want to get the bits service from uh, labdc01 and also from labdc02. In this case I used localhost. We can also get, for example, a, a list of event logs. Let's say for a system, we want to get warnings and only the three newest events. And we have in total six, six events. 
free from DC01 and free from our local host. Let's get also into some configuration. I want to install the Telnet client on both the labdc01 and labdc02 and at the same time. So in this moment it's running on both the servers and it's installing the Telnet client. And after it's done we should get the response. So it's done on localhost and it should be done shortly also on labdc01. We have both of them installed and no restart needed. And just to make sure I will run also invoke command to get the telnet client feature. And it's installed on both. Now let's say we want also to uninstall it. If we want to do this, we just run the uninstall Windows feature command. And it will go ahead of course and remove this feature from both our servers. And that was a very basic look of what we could do with PowerShell as far as managing one or more servers. If you want the code, you can get it from my GitHub page that is linked in the description. And thanks a lot. Hey everyone, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, if you found the video at least a little useful, please like, share and subscribe. It would help me a lot. Thank you again and see you in the next one.